Good afternoon. So um, at the General Assembly, we celebrate the winners of uh, grant and awards, uh, of Eurodos grant and awards. Just a summary of what uh, grant uh, and the words and the word are. Um, they have been established since uh, 2015. So the grant is uh, now up to 4,000 euro uh, given to a scientist who wants to perform a, a stay, uh, some research uh, stay, uh, with a stay at uh, one of the voting member, um, Eurodos voting member. There is a um, selection committee uh, made of three uh, members of Eurodos Council, and then uh, um, they, are, um, they propose the uh, results of their selection, and then the Council approved the, approved, uh, approved the, the winners. Uh, this is for the grant, and this is for the award. Uh, now the time schedule is has been has become is becoming quite regular. So the um, announcement is uh, uh, in summer. It's going to be um, uh, announced uh, uh, this uh, month, and the deadline for proposals is always uh, beginning or mid of October. Um, Candidate should not be uh, older than 35 years uh, old, and uh, the research should be sh carried out within uh, working groups uh, or in line with working group. So the winner for the grant uh, this year is, uh, here is Volvist. I don't know whether I, I pronounced the name uh, <laughs> and, uh, correctly. She is from BFS in Germany. Uh, her work uh, was in line with working group uh, 12, dosimetry in medical imaging, but not, uh, not within working group 12, and was on uh, development of a model to optimize those relevant parameters for CT scans of children. And um, the, the, the work was uh, in line with the uh, topics of Eurados SRA, and the home institution uh, uh, is BFS, as I said, and the host institution will be CMAT in Spain. So uh, here is, we'll give uh, a short talk on his uh, plans. And congratulations to Iris, <laughs> very good. Uh, where? Just here? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, so I quickly want to present uh, to you the, uh, what I did within the Eurodos Young Scientist Grant on the topic of Monte Carlo simulations of adapted mesh phantoms. So my uh, thesis topic at the BFS in Munich is to optimize the radiation for all body shapes of children um, in CT scans. And up until March, I was working with EGS NRC and um, voxel phantoms, but the problem was um, that I needed simulations of, of different sizes of children, and so I, the voxel phantoms are hardly deformable, and each, um, so I needed mesh phantoms, and EGS NRC um, can process these mesh phantoms. So I did an eight weeks research program in Thiamat in Spain. Um, within the dosimetry division of Jose Maria Gomez Ros and um, Monse Moralidad Chavez. The two main goals were at first to convert or translate um, all the Monte Carlo simulations, which I already did in EGS NRC, to uh, MCMP 6.2. And the second part was um, the um, Monte Carlo simulations with already the adapted mesh phantoms. Um, so the, for the first part, I took the GE Brightspeed model um, 16, which I already had in EGS NRC, and converted it to MCMP 6.2 with the energy spectra of uh, 80, 100, and 120 kilovolt. Um, and as you can see in this um, uh, figure, we, we did a tube and let the source, um, the source was triangularly shaped, and it rotated up the tube in a helical way. 
Um, we did the simulation without bowtie filter, but uh, we are working right now on implementing it still. Um, and the first uh, test simulations with uh, water columns of 1 and 16 um, square centimeters, um, got, we got really good results. Um, the relative difference was below 5%. So we think um, the, the model uh, did work very well, the translation of the model. Um, and here you see the uh, three simulations which we did with the ICRP phantom. Um, it was one year old male phantom and we did uh, to compare or to validate the model we uh, transferred to MCMP. Um, we did the simulation in EGS NRC with a voxel phantom, the same voxel phantom in MCMP and then a mesh phantom um, in MCMP. And we, the results, I mean, for prostate and thyroid, the, the results uh, vary a bit more because the uncertainties due to the small volumes are higher and the simulations already took a lot of time. So, um, yeah, we didn't simulate too many particles, but we will do it in the future. Um, and the standard va va variation was also below 5%. Um, so the next step was to adapt the, the mesh phantoms. Um, I used the pediatric mesh phantoms um, of uh, ICRP from the uh, Hangyang University in Korea um, and the Rhino 7 or Rhino 7 modeling software um, where I took the skin, um, enlarged it, so I, I didn't enlarge any, any further organs, just a, a skin surface organ. Um, assigned it the, the material soft tissue and placed it again on the on the phantom. And here you see the the difference between the two phantoms, which was smaller. Of course, in a one year old, you can't um, uh, enlarge it too much. But I did it the same for the five year old, ten year old, and fifteen year old male and female phantoms. So there, the variations were higher. And uh, then I converted the input data with the polytotet program. So um, here you see the, the last results. The, the lighter bars um, indicate a region because, for, like I said, for the one-year-old phantom, I wasn't really able um, to, to adapt it that much. So the uh, stomach, heart, and liver lie in the zone which was um, shaped and edited. So um, here the dose for the edited phantom, of course, is uh, lower um, than with the unedited phantom. And with these results, I, I can start now collecting data uh, for my doctoral thesis and uh, yeah, start to shape the, the dose for children of different body sizes. Um, yeah, and I wanna thanks, uh, thanks again to Eurodos for giving me this grant. It was a full success and um, thanks again to my supervisors at Thiamat. They couldn't be here, but um, Monse and Jose Maria really supported me. Thanks. Certification for for here is for this uh, as winner of this Eurodos grant uh, 2021. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, the, in, the award winner is uh, Agnieszka Wochnik. Uh, unfortunately, she she's not here. She couldn't um, attend the annual meeting. However, her work uh, was done in the framework of uh, working group nine, uh, radiation dosimetry radiotherapy. The research topic was um, out of field doses for scanning proton radiotherapy, uh, still for pediatric tumors. And um, uh, the topic was uh, in, in line uh, with the Eurodos uh, SRA, especially challenge 2.1 to improve dosimetric data for epidemiological studies. And spe this two specific research line of this challenge. Her, her, her home institution is uh, IFJ in uh, Poland, and the publication that was uh, the work 
that was awarded uh, um, was published in Physics and Medicine and Biology. Um, Agnieszka prepared a video um, presentation just because she couldn't uh, attend. So, are you? Okay. So, Kirsten. Hello, everyone. I am pleased to present the results of my work, which in 2021 were honored with the Eurados Young Scientist Award. My name is Agnieszka Wohnik. I belong to Working Group 9, which specialized in radiation dosimetry in radiotherapy. My activity was focused on researching the issue of secondary radiation doses in spot scanning proton radiotherapy using 3D printed proton beam compensator. Generally, it can be said that the purpose of many activities taken in this area was to determine neutron and photon production in the proton beam compensator and to compare it with neutron doses produced in the range shifter. These two accessories are used to shorten the range of protons inside the patient's body, which is especially needed in the treatment of shallowly located lesions, most often in children. 3D printed compensators are adapted to patient's body and lesion, while the range shifter is a universal accessory. To deal with the issue comprehensively, it was necessary to take a series of successive steps. We started with the organization of the measurement campaign. A lot of people worked then on the efficient reading and analysis of the doses obtained. Then we discussed extensively and analyzed many times the result in the group. The final stage of many hours of work, talks and discussions was the publication of the article. Experimental campaign took place in September 2018 in Krakow at the Cyclotron Center Branowice and the Institute of Nuclear Physics, Polish Academy of Sciences in Poland. 20 people from 14 different research institutions took part in the experiments. Four different experiments were carried out, including one focused on measuring the out-of-field doses generated using a range shifter and a compensator in therapy. Two anthropomorphic phantoms, five and ten years old, were used for a superficial target in the brain. Both active detectors located inside the therapy room and passive detectors placed inside the phantoms were used. Measurements were supplemented by Monte Carlo simulation of the radiation transport. For the applied 3D printed compensators, out of field doses from both secondary photons and neutrons were lower than for range shifter. To visualize the obtained results, I would like to present one example diagram showing the doses of scattered photon radiation obtained by organs at risk during irradiation measured inside the five years old phantom. Photon dose inside phantoms leads to higher out of field doses for range shifter than compensators to almost all organs with the highest ratio between them of up to 1245 for breasts. On the other hand, a comparison of the result from, with the literature data shows that doses for a compensator can be considered within the limits of uncertainty to be consistent with doses obtained without any preabsorber, which is a great result. It means that compensator is useful while not generating additional harmful radiation. The work and the analysis of the results were described in detail in the article entitled out of field doses for scanning proton radiotherapy of shallowly located pediatric tumor, tumors, a comparison of range shifter and 3D printed compensator, published in Physics and Medicine and Biology in 2021. At this point, I would like to thank you very much for the award. It is a great honor to receive such a prestigious prize. 
it would not have been possible for me to do so much without the great support of the wonderful members of the URADOS Working Group 9. It was a great experience for me to participate and collaborate with these people. Thank you very much. And I also thank everyone here for your attention. And Agnese will receive the certification by mail and uh, I think. Okay, and uh, just the last few words, mm, as uh, Philip mentioned, that uh, still another action is uh, to provide young scientists conference support which, uh, to, to um, uh, young scientists, uh, which is uh, up to, uh, which is 500 euros to support uh, the participation of uh, conferences. Uh, we, the conferences are selected by the Council and uh, um, at the beginning of the year or during the year. And uh, for, um, for 2022, um, a total of uh, uh, eight grants have, uh, have been approved and uh, they were announced uh, uh, on the newsletter and also on the website in April. So there were... Um, Two for uh, IRPA at the Budapest uh, con Congress, but we received no applications. There are still six grants, four for ERPW, so the Radiation Protection Week uh, in Portugal, and two for the conference uh, on medical physics, physics uh, in Dublin. Uh, the deadline is 30th of June, so uh, you should think to apply, there is still time, and all the instructions and um, forms to be filled in are on the website. Okay, and I think this is my last slide. Thank you very much. <laughs>